Video is getting increasingly important for podcasts, uh, not just to record an entire episode and make that engaging to look at and not just sort of listen, uh, but at the same time, great, great takeouts and clips that you can use on social media. And the best way to do that is by using high quality video. So in this video, I actually want to show you how to build a podcast studio on a slightly larger budget. Uh, we set up this space for some uh, friends uh, here in Amsterdam that were looking for a space to record and some help with our video. And that's for us like a great way to test and prototype, but we did set a pretty high bar this time, right? This is recorded at our attic. Uh, I, I would love to see, show you the before you and behind video. You were too busy building <laughs> walls to actually make those sh shots, right? I think I got some uh, a shot or two, but because it was quite challenging. Uh, now we are looking at a flat wall, but we have this really uh, weird shaped attic. Um, so, shall we start out? With yeah, maybe like, we should start with the uh, with layout. Uh, let's start with layout. So what we want to cover in this video is how to set up, how we set up our space. So the layout of this conversation, um, how we set up different camera angles. And I think it's a quite a typical podcast setup. It's exactly. Just, uh, so actually a squ square, but but if you see the space where we where we transformed it into, then uh, exactly. Yeah. So it's two guests. We're optimizing for two guests. Of course, there's like a lot of different setups. We decided to make it like a sit down area, so making very casual. Um, so we optimized this for two guests. We'll be talking through the different camera angles, talking through lighting. We talk about how we connected all these things together and how we're recording, of course, with detail. But let me try to yeah. sort of sketch let's, out. Let's what, see how, how this how works. We're sitting here, right? So this is the couch. And this is the chair that I'm sitting on. I'll look at my drawing skills. Uh, you were practicing because I saw you do this. I did practice a little bit because <laughs> like, instead of... How does he do this so uh, fast? Uh, this me, is all real time. Uh, so let's start with the actual couch. So that's where you're sitting, right? And I'm sitting on this little soft chair. We mostly pick these, the couch and the chair based on color because you had this really dark scene in your mind, right? But it's also inspired. nice and soft, yeah. which helps yeah. with the audio, right? So we got a large, comfortable couch uh, where you sit, but it easily fits three more people if necessary. Yeah. And I'm sitting on this chair, uh, which is also nice, soft, and at least Correct. a little bit up straight. Um, then we have, um, let me switch colors. So then we have how many cameras? We have one, two, three cameras and uh, the overview camera, which is connected with it's the iPhone. a little iPhone. bit like a yeah. bonus yeah. bonus camera, yeah, that's right? The, uh, so if you would set up a podcast, how you sort of, what's the, the ideal number of shots that you would aim for? Well, the beauty about a podcast is that you, um, you only hear stuff. You won't notice if you cut out pieces. And when you're doing a podcast with multiple people, uh, if you have two cameras, then you can cut away because my reaction can overlap your mistake, whatever. So you need at least, in my opinion, two cameras. And in this case, we have one more extra camera for an overview, so we can see the full setting. Yeah. So there's one camera focused at me, one camera focused at you, Paul, and then the overview, and then we have the extra bonus camera. Yeah, so the ideal you would have for two guests, you would have two or three cameras. Yeah. The min minimum is one, right? But it let's say- be, you, It could also be one wide angle. Of course, right? one wide angle would work with, I mean, for example, if two people were sitting on the couch, the, the thing then is, let's say you want to cut out something, you get a jump cut. So. Yeah, but let's um, start with the basics. So we started with one overview camera. That's yeah. the camera that I'm now pointing at. That camera is actually staged on this side. So I draw these little triangles. Uh, this is like the camera angle. Um, that basically takes a shot of both of us, yeah. right? And it has also the stage. We could even, it, in, theoretically, we could also cut this and use close-ups of us if yeah. the quality would be I mean, enough, if the right? quality would high, you could zoom in, but... Um yeah, but for social media clips and such, this for is sure. Great, and so this is always a safe camera as well because you can always cut back to the overview camera. So I think this is the safest and easiest angle to make. So. Great. And we have another camera looking at it basically behind the couch. Yeah. And that camera is pointing at me, so that's Correct. my close up. That's the pole cam. Um, and then there's another camera a little bit over here. All of these are on tripods. And that's the camera for your close up. Yeah. Right? Maybe, so can me, you maybe draw me. arrows for where. Yeah. So, so these are us. You were practicing. <laughs> I did practice a little bit because otherwise <laughs> my daughter will make fun of me because of my drawing skills. Uh, 
Yeah. And in terms of angles, uh, to sum up the angles, we uh, yeah, ideally minimum is one shot would be an overview shot yeah. of both guests. Ideally, you aim for three different camera angles. Um, and that sounds complicated and expensive, but that's actually what we build detail for. So that could be, for example, a DSLR that you connect, could be an iPhone, could be multiple iPhones, could be an iPad and an iPhone. Uh, there are all kinds of different ways to connect it. I actually made a video about how you can connect different cameras. But if you have two guests, the best case would be at least three camera angles because uh, that gives you a lot of room to work with. I would say a good rule of thumb is the amount of guests plus one camera. Why plus one? Because the then, um, so in this case, we're with two persons. So we, there's one camera pointed at you, one camera pointed at me. So we have this, uh, we can see each other's reaction and the overview. So it's Paul plus Frank is two plus one. Um, it's a good, a good rule of thumb. If we would place another guest, then we need three cameras plus the overview. Um, and the overview is nice when you look at the recordings that we made last week. It's super nice to have that overview shot because you can see the interaction between yeah. people. This is already quite a complicated setup, but uh, we, as we were setting the bar a little bit higher, I think this is the minimum for a two-person pe- podcast. If you want to set up bar really high, and then the next question is, how are we gonna record this? Yeah, in so and we we in this in this setup, we decided to use external cameras that yep. all are connected to USB C. We'll be talking a little bit more about the connection yep. and how to hook everything up in in like a separate part. So we'll get to that later. Uh, you can skip to that uh, probably if you look at the description we'll, we'll include the timestamps because there's a lot of content to cover here uh, we connected these cameras and we decided to use external cameras because we were setting the highest bar for yeah. quality um but it could also be an iphone right so if the Correct. folks that were hosting this that, that were hosting before they moved into the studio they're actually using iphones in detail to record the same podcast um, if you use iphones most important is light uh, so that brings us to the next topic um, an iPhone is amazing quality if you have great lighting. Yep. Uh, of course, the camera is, it works works even better if you have a great camera. Uh, you can hook that up in different ways. We'll be talking about that later. But how do you sort of now that we have these angles, how do we think about lighting? Where do we start? Well, let's start uh, with daylight. Let's yes. imagine that we would have daylight, right? So this is um, the top floor of our building, which is an amazing floor, but it's a little bit challenging uh, because there's a lot of windows. And the first thing when we moved in here, that I took a large sheets of paper and I covered all the windows and everything like, why would you want to do that? Because we're in the Netherlands. When the um, owners of the building came in, they like, looked at this space and they said, wow, wow. we had this amazing yeah. daylight. <laughs> we had this idea with a lot of light. A dark cave. So the, uh, I think consistency here is the key word. If you rely on daylight, it can be cloudy. It can be very sunny. Um, and then your light will never be the same. So uh, behind you is a really huge window. I covered it, so there's no distracting lights. Not, uh, because we covered everything, we have full control. Um, but then when we have everything closed down, there's no light. But and it's also this space is dedicated to record. If you would there be you recording, go. So, yeah. let's say, in your kitchen or your living room, it doesn't make sense. It uh, will take more effort to actually cover all the windows, yeah. right? Well, I mean... If eventually uh, you gain a lot because now we have full control uh, because no lights means no image, but we do have a couple lights. We have a, a key light on me, a key light on you, Paul, and a, a top-down light. So actually this scene is lit with three simple lights. It's not too complicated. Um, you want to draw them in. Right, so if there is a big light source here hovering yeah. above the table. Yeah. I didn't draw and the tables, but let's keep it simple, right? <laughs> So this and this top down light basically lights out the com- lights out the, the complete scene. Yeah, there's a little bit light on our faces, and I deliberately choose a black or darker background because if the light doesn't hit the the wall, it gets a little bit moody and dark. So it's mostly because you watch the Becky and Chris videos. I am you inspired. Like setup, right? Becky, Chris, we should I'm link in, to that. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, I. I the, when I was setting up a podcast studio, I had a mood board, and it, the first twenty images consisted of there. So I'm a little bit inspired. So sorry for for well, borrow, to them. Yeah. borrowing your idea. Um, so we have a main light source, and it could also be sort of if if there would be a window. Ideally, the window would be on that side. Okay, so we have a softbox here. So that's the main. Uh, and then there is key a little light. sort of. I'm looking at a little light. Sort of that's a key light. A little key light on this side. Yeah, that's dedicated for you. And that's to light my face and make me look pretty. 
or younger try um or it highlights the gray hairs here and then we have the other one which is on this side just above the couch and it's nice they're a little dark so they don't really sort of don't stand out that much you don't really see them and that's lighting you as well yeah right so those are controllable they're, they're relatively dimmed so they give yeah. just a little bit of sort of lighting in our face so that for the close-ups you actually get a really nice because a lot of it is about expression right do you want to talk about my paper uh, solution <laughs> yeah so you covered this paper <laughs> I just this little light with a piece of paper to dim it and like a small softbox like yeah. a five cent softbox so these are just small led lights yeah. that you can control so you can dim them and they're they, even ba battery powered they yeah they they're battery powered but we plug them in through usb but you have a lot of different variants of little usb video lights that yeah. actually make great key lights um, and they go as cheap as 40 bucks so yeah well like i would super, say even as cheap as 15 yeah. or 20 yeah, euros like insanely cheap um, and ideally you find something that's at least powered so you don't run off, out of battery in the middle of an episode but these are controllable so they should produce bright light daylight ideally and you should be able to dim them i think that's yeah. the only requirement almost As in, don't use light bulbs because light bulbs typically are too yellow but and so then we have a few there's a little bit like a like an ikea light bulb over here so there's a blue led bar over here these could be Philips U lights, they could be affordable LED lights. Yeah, so you just, don't yeah. necessarily need those, but what we try to do, and I think it's one of the things that we try to design in this space is that this still this space is still bare bones. We only put up like a little a little print behind me and we we played with the colors. But ideally when we're hosting people here, they bring their own props. So each of these shots actually looks unique because we're switching between different camera angles and we try to sort of help you tell your story. And typically when we're hosting, in this case, podcast about media, both of the um, hosts of that show have their own personalities and they're very different characters. And this actually would be super fun if we can bring that character into the shot as well. So you create that, you can play with props. You can it ideally start with a very basic background, but then start adding things to it. So what you're looking at is very bare bones setup. We only added some plans and a little bit of props. But ideally, bit by bit, that shot becomes more interesting and it reflects the personality of the folks in the shot as well. So let's sum up the lighting, right? And ideally, you have one big light source. Yeah. In the best case, you can control it, but it could also be the sun. Uh, yeah. If it's the sun, it shouldn't be fully bright sunlight, but daylight is amazing. I mean, I think a good tip is that uh, you have these curtains that are letting light through. That makes the light very soft. Actually, yeah. the sun is the best light source because uh, it's you're looking there. for soft light. Yeah, a big soft light source. Uh, I it could be a big soft box or it could be like professional lights. It's amazing if you can if you can invest that, and especially in a professional space, just invest in a large soft box. Yeah, that's number one. Then we use smaller the key, key lights. lights. Yeah, on the side to actually control the, the individual lighting of the folks in the shots. And then we use a few accent lights around us to add depth to the scene and make sure that we create some personality in the shots. It looks a little bit more real. Exactly. If you think about the studio, what we invested, most of our investment was actually in the lights, right? Yeah. And that, but they don't have to be super expensive. Uh, they, they are very affordable, I guess. Yeah. We gave our team members also a budget to update their home studios. And that budget is roughly, I think for most folks, I saw the first shopping list and was 500 i think 500 for a complete yeah. setup I which for a studio think, is like and i still think it's sort of a, a lot of money but at the yeah. same time if you use this if you would be setting up your professional podcasting studio to host guests and such that's a small price to pay yeah. i think we have uh, very clear examples of very expensive podcast studio that spend a little bit more than what we spent do we have a total budget on this or do we want to not talk about that well, we could we can we could make a tally, but I think in the end most of the budget went to the furniture. And I think in terms of lighting, if you sort of look at the lights that we have that we use every day, um, I think it's roughly a thousand euros that we spend on lighting. And again, that's because we want to control the environment. Yeah. So let's actually see how we tie all of this together. One of the challenges that we saw when people are, are adding video to their podcast is that their workflow just gets much more complicated instantly. And it's just really, really hard 
to one get great quality video that reflects the quality of what you're used to as an even experienced podcast creators the moment that they add video i was a little bit surprised by a relatively low quality video and they're experts in audio and they really sort of nailed down their audio workflow when you introduce video so many things get much more complicated so what typically happens in a in a multi-camera recording you have the multiple camera setup tripods batteries SD cards, you press record, so it's going to be one, two, three cameras, you do a clap, you sync with the audio, and then afterwards you're done recording, you need to take out all these SD cards, load them in, camera one, two, three, and then start editing. To have multi-camera isolated recording, in this case in your Mac, is, uh, is something else. And then if you're going to for, do this 4K... This is actually the moment where you sort of should <laughs> yeah. take us through your little setup. Let's let show walk how we, So let's show how we connected, in this particular case, four different cameras do a screen recording, record everything in sync, including the audio, right? So let's show your little card, Frank. So this is detail. And for every camera, uh, we set up a separate scene. So this is the wide angle, um, which I was of course in the shot, but I'm now here. Uh, this is the close shot of Paul. And this is me. Um, this is our wireless iPhone, the overview of the studio. So. That's me in the, at the card in the back. And I'm doing a screen record since it's all just uh, the M1 Mac Mini. Um, th the reason why we chose for the, the Mac Mini is because it has the, the best I.O. Just two USB A's, two USB or Thunderbolt 4 uh, ports so the Ethernet and HDMI. So it has the most uh, options. Everything what you see is recorded uh, individually. What happens, you see the timeline here, with the, which is uh, growing. And when you stop recording, it's maybe more interesting. Uh, you can then edit your, your selected scenes. So you can go back in time, basically, and rearrange your edits. So, uh, so one thing that we didn't cover when we talked about cameras yet is what kind of lens to use. Yeah. So when you set up your camera, you actually, so you, I have different, if I, even in my iPhone, when I select the iPhone as a camera in detail, I can select the, I have an iPhone 13 Pro, which has ultra wide, wide and telephoto lenses. And the telephoto is more up close. So you yep. typically use that to zoom in more on the subject. I have a wide angle, which takes let's say would take most of this room and the ultra wide is almost like super wide fish, fish eye right yeah. what lens would i use for these sort of for camera one two and three what lens would you pick for these um i think it's important to state that that the uh, uh the iphone has an incredible camera uh, everything from the 11 pro and up is is pretty good um this is a still a pretty dark situation so um your iphone has a couple cameras in your case you have three camera uh lenses um that's the ultra wide the wide and the close and i think the best camera for the iphone is the wide it's the safest camera if you go super wide it loses quite a bit of quality in, in lower light situations uh, in, in your drawing that the main camera is camera two i would go for the iphone wide camera lens um I think it's the best lens. It gives you really good quality, even in in, in more uh, difficult light situation. So uh, yeah, that's going to be iPhone wide. Um, and then for these, we picked telephoto. Tele, yeah, for sure. That only applies if you have a pro camera, though. But the uh, the telephoto makes a little bit more cropped shot, but you won't lose quality over this crop, of course, because the zoom length is a little bit more. Uh, it's and longer. If, and if we would talk about, let's say, uh, a Sony full frame camera, then the wide would be like 35. Yeah. Um, 35 in this case, a 35 mil. Uh, that gives a very neutral, nice looking uh, uh, wide angle shot. I mean, almost natural. And uh, the two uh, close up cameras are 30, uh, uh, 85 mil. So, so we have two 85 millimeters. Yeah. And this, of course, is for a full frame camera. And 85. And the exact sort of length doesn't really matter, no, but it's more like the idea one, two of them are a little bit more close, close up. That's maybe what we decided because of the compression and some of that, one of them is a little bit wider. Um, and maybe a nice tip for people that want to have this uh, bokeh thing going on, the longer your lens, the easier it is to get the bokeh. I mean, space is the, the most, I think the, 
depth of your studio setup. Maybe that's an interesting. Th- uh, this is not that big, Paul. It's no. this, so maybe it's interesting. We're to using see three it. by three meters. That's it. It's not yeah. that much. Well, it's a significant room in a in a home, right? Yeah. And and if we would have if we would have only used this for two person setup, I think we could have easily squeezed we it think, in in yeah. three by two almost. We actually made it much smaller, so the space is yeah. a little bit larger, but we covered yeah. the walls and we we made it a little bit more tight. Um, as we're using pro cameras, we have full control over a lot of settings. But I can still use my other settings, right? Of course, but uh, then you don't have control. And if, if you... I would have to set, if you would tell me to, because if I go into manual mode on my camera, yeah. things get really complicated quickly, right? After a few years, I know what sort of, thanks yeah. to YouTube, I know how it works. That's a but good question. If you would have to, if I, if you would tell me to set only one thing to, or maybe two things, two settings or three settings, sort of, what would you adjust in a camera? Let's say that we take, yeah. Let's say that we take this camera. This is a point and shoot. It's a vlogging camera. It has a great HDMI out. So this is this had the it's a perfect one. camera. Yeah, good it's autofocus. Relatively, it's relatively affordable. I can easily hook this up to detail with a capture card. If I would set this up to shoot in a setting like this. What would you tell me to do? It, well, like yeah, could be full auto, mo- full manual mode. Full manual mode definitely works. Uh, I think the quality gets uh, is more consistent if you would put it on manual, and in this case, manual the shutter speed um, to set it at a fig. I don't, I don't mind if you shoot twenty five or thirty or fifty. I don't care as long as the shutter speed is fixed um, and your Y balance is set because the lights. They have a certain Y balance and they're not going to change. So you can fix your Y balance. Auto Y balance works, but it will. Th- and especially if you start playing with the color of your lights. If, yes. If I would be go. using like blue background lights yeah. or maybe pink or. And then my, my skin tones might look completely different. And right? for whoever's interested, your Y balance reference, because you have blue light in the background, is way different than mine because I have yellow. So if you fix your camera, let's say you would switch these cameras, the light will look the same. But with auto white balance, it will go. Yeah, and that example, this is yeah. off white. Yeah, right? and, yes, and I have black, so that yeah. so the light balances of your shirt with my orange makes it a little bit. In- and then there's comp- a blue, blue yeah. LED bar on the side, which also colors me. I so. think the most cameras have a. I mean, the iPhone does pretty good job with auto white balance actually, but we're having multiple cameras, and they will have different interpretations of what white balance. Uh, it should shoot on, shoot on. So we set it to manual, to manual wide balance, balance yeah. and make sure that we check the picture that it looks natural yeah. when we shoot. So my my advice would be like spend a little bit more time on your setup. When you're happy, then you just need to sit down and press record. Yeah. So um, uh, I I can fully agree that auto settings work. I do think that manual settings give a better better result. Takes yeah. a little bit In more the long time run, right? for sure. Yeah. That's but I would I would say people do not do not shy away from if you first thing no. if you would be recording I, and I have rec- sort of sometimes I recorded a video for 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 the detail channel as well and I look at it afterwards I forgot to set the white balance and I look completely red yeah. and it's sort of completely discolored in the end sort of it's the piece of content that matters so yeah and the shot and for the rest the the, the setup that we created here for like those types of videos already make me feel very comfortable and I can actually sort of share what I want to share, right? So making that video is even more important, but I agree that the repeatability and making it easy to set it, set it up, you have to start somewhere. I would say just start crafting the picture, start with the lighting, and then a next step could be to start tweaking the camera settings, yeah. right? That's the next. And once you know what the difference is between shutter speed and ISO values and white Aperture, balance. Yeah. If you yeah. if you spend, let's say, 20 minutes to just get a basic understanding of those concepts, that will pay out, right? For sure. Yeah. yeah. So let's link to a few amazing videos. But and we're talking about in this case, we're talking about setting the bar, right? We started this ep- this we started this episode with how do we how did we build this space and how do you upgrade your video, create a pro looking podcast setup and you, yeah. say, you you tell us if you do that, use manual camera settings as much as you can because that will give you control over the setup. Yeah, and uh, I I have to say like I wish uh, we've done this before because uh, 
um, it's fairly simple. If if you look in hindsight, it's what we did is not is not of a big of a change over in the in the setting, but it's I think very effective. Um, not every has not not everybody has three by three meters or ten by ten square feet. Is it square feet? Ten by ten. Ten by ten feet. That's one hundred square feet. That's one hundred square feet. That sounds a lot. That's a lot. Let's not talk about that, square feet. Let's just call it meters. <laughs> yeah, three by three. Um, but it's it's not that not that big of a space. But with these small adjustments, I mean, using background paper, you can do fantastic things. It looks amazing. Uh, these small color lights. The, the cheap RGB lights they can pick up be picked up for for a couple bucks on Amazon, and and the make. So it's a little, it's much less about the budget that you spend than the yeah. exact equipment that you use, but it's much more about sort of thinking about the picture that you try to create, right? Correct, and get some inspiration from very successful podcasters. <laughs>